and welcome to another episode of The Awesomeness of Marriage Matters. My name is Andy. And I'm Joe. And I'm Andy. <laughs> I may have said that. So welcome to Marriage Matters. Um, we're looking at what's the topic again? Let's Get Physical Part 3. Let's Get Physical Part 3. But as ever, if you want to know what's going on with all the stuff that goes on with the Barry mm-hmm. Bunch, which is many varied and awesome um you can like us on facebook you can subscribe to our youtube channel we're also on twitter come and tweet along Mm -hmm. i won't sing um (laughs) and we're on tumblr as well but the best thing you can do is sign up to berry bites our weekly and monthly newsletter and it's berry bites with a y why not because (laughs) why not so there you go let's get physical yeah so we're looking at yeah we're looking at sex in marriage intimacy and we just can't do it justice in in one part or two parts so we're on a third part yes and there'll be a part four as well <laughs> there will be and we um in part last part we looked at frequency of sex yes um expectations that we bring into our marriage and false messages um we obviously looked at the advantages of a healthy sex life yeah. and that comes throughout the sessions really yep. and i shared one of my favorite memories you did. and you'd have to go to session two part two to, to hear what that was indeed yeah so this time we thought we'd look at moods and feelings around sex in marriage um that could that's quite a big subject really what part do feelings and moods have and should they yeah. or should they not um, obviously, God's best for us. We talk through that, and the second part, if we get time, because we, you know these are big subjects. Vulnerability, the importance of vulnerability. So Indeed. those are the kind of areas we're trying to look at today. Nice, gentle things to look at. Yes. So that's um, let's let's get physical, and that's what we're looking at today. Um, a little bit of the Bible, mm-hmm. which I have. Yes. Um, and we're going to look at it from a slightly different perspective, as I very briefly read this out, and it's from one Corinthians chapter 7 uh, verse 5 which says this do not deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self control Mm. and I find it fascinating we can look at that scripture in all sorts of ways Uh, but the one we want to look at tonight is why does Paul go to such lengths of saying don't stop being intimate together Mm. because by saying that he's also therefore saying it's important that you're having yeah. um, regular physical intimacy. Um, so why? Yeah, I think that's the point of um, looking at sex in marriage. We want to look at the good side of it. Yes. Too often sex is seen as, as something bad or ugly, or you stop doing it when you get married, which is ridiculous. But we know that from the Bible, God has given us sex to enjoy and to have in marriage. Um, and so, hey, it must be good because God is a good father and gives good gifts (laughs) and Paul makes the point that we shouldn't stop so why would we stop well it's for prayer for a very brief period Mm. of time it's about both people agreeing um, and it's for a short time and that's important Mm. but what does a short time look like well that's kind of up to you um, in your particular situation what is short what is long how long is a piece of string this is the point Mm. we don't know so that's what we're looking at today Yep. Nice, short, easy little episode. <laughs> Trying to make this a normal conversation because, hey, sex is part of life. If you yeah. are alive and breathing, you are here because of sex. So it's a normal part of life. Yeah. That's Marriage Matters today. So um, should we have a little break? We shall. Okay, cool. <laughs> In 2018, Joe and I were full-time children's ministers, loving what we were doing and wanting to share our resources freely with others to use. Scroll on two years to 2020 and we'd finally launched our berrybunch.family website. Chock full of resources. It was a bit embarrassing when we had one video, but we've now got nearly 500 videos for you to use, stream, share and download with 900 posts, all full of information that you are free to use in your situation, whether that's a church, a family or just for your own personal use. We've been asked to do all sorts of things. We've made logos for somebody who wanted a new logo for their blog. We've been asked to create children's discipleship group. So we've done that. We've been asked to create a book about broken dreams and hope, and we've done that as well. We love creating resources that are relevant to your situation. So get in touch with what your needs are. Our vision and our passion is to create material that is family safe or free for all, wherever you are in the world. And that is exactly what we do. So if you want to help us continue to do that, or if you want us to make something specific for your situation, then get in touch. (laughs) 
Welcome back to Marriage Matters. Let's get physical part three. Um, and to this time, it is three, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's still part track. three. Um, so part three, we're looking at moods and feelings. Um, so ah, there's the archetypal, isn't there? Oh, I've got a headache. Um, uh, or finding different reasons why we might not be in the mood for sex. And so what are your thoughts on that, Andy? My first thought was a question, which is, have you? I don't think you've ever done that, have you? You've never done that, I've got a headache, I don't Faked. want sex. I feel really bad because sometimes you do have a headache and you think, oh, no, I'm not faking it. It's real. <laughs> it's true. Um, but no, I don't, I don't think so because I think it's what we've said before, isn't it, about being honest and open. And, and so really that's something else going on as well, isn't it? I mean, it might be that you're not in the mood, but you need to be honest about it really, don't you? Which I think we do quite well at. Yeah. Um, but yes, we can make excuses. Um, I mean, obviously difficulties come, um, health issues, children, um, you know, we have family, lots of different things that, that, that take up our time. Um, but sometimes we can get into the habit, can't we? And then sort of not, not be we in the mood. We almost fall out of the habit, don't we? Mm. And I think it's interesting. Um, no, you shouldn't be forcing yourself to have sex. However, as with many other things, sometimes... You need to go through the motions even if you're not in the mood for it. And that includes yeah. things like exercise. If you need to go for a run and it's important to go and exercise, you may not feel in the mood. Mm. So what do you do? You you put your trainers on, you put your shorts on, you get out the door and you, okay, I'll go running. <laughs> and actually, that's not a bad analogy for sometimes when we're not really in the mood for making love. Actually, you, you just need to start getting into it. There's yeah. this... Um, Hollywood myth. I mean, you, Hollywood's hilarious, isn't it? You, the, the, the archetypal sex scene in a, in a Hollywood movie where we normally turn off is they're both ready to go. And here we often, you know, mm-hmm. it, it just doesn't work that way in, in normal life. Um, in married life, it's not boring either, but actually it's not quite like that. Um, but I think we need to look at the, the, the mood and, and, and the feelings. And the problem with feelings is if we allow our actions to be led by our feelings, mm-hmm. we can get into quite a lot of trouble because our feelings lie. Yeah. I use this all the time, this illustration. However, we have our dinner, we see the dessert, we're full, we eat it because we want more, and we get halfway through the ping and I think, oh, I can't eat anymore. Mm. Because our feelings lie to us, and it's no different with our emotions. They're really, really good as a thermometer. You know, how do I feel? Well, it's a great way of thinking, how, how am I doing? How am I processing this? But we have to be really careful that our feelings don't overrule our, our actions. And actually, yeah. that scripture should never, ever, ever be used as... The Bible says we shouldn't stop having sex, so you must have sex with me, okay? Mm. If you're doing that, you're just out of line, you're wrong. Go and get yourself sorted. Go and speak to your pastor and get some counselling, because that's the wrong attitude. However, mm. there is something to be said for going through the motions. So the, the stereotype would be the wife, that, oh, I'm just not in the mood. You know, why aren't you making love? Or I just, just don't feel like it. And actually, I don't feel like it isn't actually a good reason not mm. to make love, because um, it's not about forcing yourself and going against your will. It's about understanding that... For a wife more so than a man, perhaps, but not necessarily completely, um, feeling in the mood actually comes after you get into doing. Mm. So you may not feel like making love, but actually that comes from doing. Mm. Um, in the same way as going for a run, you may not feel like it, but as you start to go, you think, oh, I feel quite feel quite good now. And the benefits of, of uh, a healthy sex life in a, in a marriage for a husband and wife, it's, they're, they're many. Mm. So actually, there's a good reason to have it. Paul reminds us not to stop unless it's for a short time and only for prayer. Mm. So we need to be careful not to allow our moods to, to get in the way. And actually, I remember really clearly when we were first married, you read the book by Stormy and Martin. Mm. And, and uh, you shared this with me, and I thought it was fascinating because I didn't understand this stuff. We were newlyweds, and this is all new. But you said what, what she was talking to the wives was, you may not feel in the mood, but go off and pray. So what you would do, if, if I wanted to um, to make love and you weren't in the mood, you'd go into the bathroom, you'd spend a bit of time in prayer, and then you'd come back and you'd be wanting to make love. So prayer is a really key part of this. Mm. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. I would forgotten I used to do that. I remember you <laughs> but yeah, that's funny. Moods and feelings are slightly different. Like moods, you can yeah. ha- get a mood on, can't you? And it can go for a length of time. And that's what we're saying. You can get out of the habit of making love, and then it becomes... Um, the norm um, but feelings yeah they are good for the thermometers but you know we, 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 we need to be careful that they don't rule our lives absolutely because um, I mean at the end of the day marriage is about loving one another and, and if you, you can't always feel love can no. you? it is a commitment isn't it and it's a promise and there is a commitment to, to make love in that relationship um, interestingly and... one of the things I heard a long time ago I wish I remembered who said this because it was quite good <laughs> But they were talking about how um, when you get married, there's all sorts of things that happen. There's a legal contract, there's the ceremony, and Mm -hmm. almost, you know, starting of a life. 
But they said, you need to understand, this is to husbands and wives thinking of their other other off. Mm -hmm. Not a great phrase, but whatever. <laughs> um, when you get married, you're opening up sexual desire. Mm. You read about that in the Song of Songs and, and, and the wife to be pleased with her friends don't awaken sexual desire before it's time. Mm. We've done an episode on that. But what's interesting is once it's opened up, the only person I can get my satis sexual satisfaction from is you mm. and vice versa. So when you say no to sex or I say no to sex, actually we're saying, well, you might need sexual satisfaction, but you ain't getting it from me. And actually, where else can you go? You shouldn't mm. be going anywhere else. Um, and again, this isn't a way of saying, well, you know, this is what it says, so you, we have to have sex. That's that's not the point. You don't use the the 1 Corinthians 7 as a, as a baseball bat. But you yeah. do need to understand it as Paul is saying, look, if you stop having intimacy for too long, you are allowing all sorts of problems to come in between you. Mm. Because now the enemy is going to tempt you, which is what the scripture says. And I think the other thing is don't get legalistic about this as well, because having sex is a great part of marriage but there's plenty of times when you can't mm. so that doesn't in some way nullify the marriage is not good because you can't make love we're not talking about that as ever in marriage matters we're looking at what's what's god's best as we understand it what, what's his desire for us yeah and his desire for us isn't to have a sexless marriage but it's to be intimate with one another in seasons there's plenty of seasons where you won't be able to have almost any physical contact perhaps you're away for a year because you're fighting in the military mm. or you've got a sales job you're away for four nights a week you come back you just want to go to sleep in your own bed there's there's loads of reasons that can get in the way yeah but but what we're always trying to say is let's not allow moods and feelings to be an excuse yeah that's what we were talking about getting to bad habits wasn't it really mm. and i think what we're we're doing with marriage matters is placing the importance of of developing your marriage growing together and and this is part of that it's yeah. part of that it's just as much a part of you know you have date night or, or or you know just spending quality time together i mean date night could be a time of uh, making love it could be. They'd be like right let's 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 do this um, I said this before, there's nothing wrong with planning spontaneity because what you're doing is planning a protected time within which you can be free. Yeah. But I mean, again, it's about prayer. It's about talking things through because if, you know, it might be that if you haven't got a libido, you know, haven't got a sex drive or it's lower, it could be some medical condition. Oh, yeah. It could be, you know, stress can really, you know, mess with your your, your ability to make love, um, you know, tiredness um, mm. and, and other kinds of physical you know, ailments. Could be just a children's seasons. You've got the in-laws yeah. living with you that, you know, there's, Vit there's so much. Vitamin deficiency. Or something yes. could be really simple. Um, and so it's worth sort of talking that through, praying it through, working it out, not just just accepting it, I suppose, not expect yeah. it, accepting the status quo and thinking, oh, well, because it's important. God mm. wants us to make love. So it's important, isn't it? And it does help. And, and, and we've been talking about the benefits, haven't we, and we have. of, a, of a healthy sex life in marriage. I think the other little element of this is there's lots of obstacles to... Um, finding a way of being regularly or frequently, whatever, um, physically intimate. There's loads of obstacles. And mm. what we're saying is there are some that we can easily get away. We mm. can just deal with. Some obstacles, you've got to climb over them. You've got to go around them. You've got to mm. blow them up out of the way. Others, you just walk through. Yeah. Actually, there's some obstacles we, we just need to overcome. Yeah. And, and deal with. And don't allow things that we can easily deal with to become excuses. Yeah. So... Oh, we've done really well, actually. We've done moods and feelings, I think. I mean, we could talk about it for a lot longer. <laughs> but I think we, we've got time to talk about vulnerability, haven't we? Vulnerability. The importance of it. Why is vulnerability important? Well, here's the thing. I remember Jay Parker talking about this very well from Hot, Holy and Humorous. And she said, the thing for a woman is she's always going to have more vulnerability because in the physical act of intimacy, of intercourse, the man is actually entering inside to the woman's body. Mm. You can't be any more vulnerable than that. Um, and she talks about the importance of, of you know, vulnerability and, and compassion and love and feeling mm. safe and all the rest of it. But actually, when you break it down into the sort of physical side of it, it's it's quite a vulnerability for for a wife to open up to a husband in mm. that way. Um, but I mean, how does how does vulnerability work for you if we're not getting on very well? You you don't feel yeah. safe, do you? No, you don't. It's not about you know hostile, angry, violent, physically afraid. It's not that. It's if you're not feeling mentally and emotionally safe because you've had an argument, then the mm. two of you aren't aren't really going to be connecting all that well. No. But it's not about okay, you know, physical violence. Let's we're not doing the bad stuff. We're sticking on what's yeah, God's best. Stick, yeah. But 
you know, you need to feel safe to be vulnerable. And the more vulnerable you are, the better it gets. Mm. And this is why it's so hard for um, people who've gone through divorce and remarried. We're not going into is divorce, good or bad, different conversation. But if you've remarried, it can be really hard to feel vulnerable again because everything within you as a human is going to want to protect yourself from ever being hurt mm. again. But the really good stuff mm. happens through vulnerability. But that's where yeah. Jesus Christ comes in and helps us to forgive and, and move forward. Yeah, we do ne- need help. And I always think that when you are married, you've got God at the centre. And this stuff isn't easy. I mean, you you know, you're sort of laying your life... It, it to your you know your other I mean, half. literally physically literally, you bare, know aren't you? yeah laying everything bare um yeah and so it's it can be difficult especially like we've talked about people coming with baggage and different attitudes and different yeah. ways and like you say one might be in the mood and one might not be that can can be difficult but yeah it is a vulnerable place to be but it uh, in that vulnerability brings about something really precious very special and when you think about the fact that we Joe is my bride, but we are Jesus's bride. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a really good metaphor to try and understand that a little bit. But actually, the vulnerability that Joe has to me is a really great illustration for how vulnerable I need to be to Jesus Christ. Mm. So actually, if I'm thinking, how does my relationship with God need to look like? I, I look at how Joe responds to me because when she's feeling really safe and comfortable and I'm, I'm being the husband I should be before God everything gets better Mm. Um, but actually it's a really great illustration of what our life with Jesus Christ needs to be like how vulnerable we need to be with him and in that vulnerability the good stuff happens yeah it's not easy is it -uh. it's not not easy and and our go to is I can do this by myself I'm independent and then like you say arguments come in and it it isn't easy but um, it's God's best for us to submit to each other isn't it in a yeah. sense and and that's what you say like we submit to god and we we learn so much about our relationship with god in, in marriage because it's remove the obstacles <laughs> that get in the way the easy ones like clothes is a good one yes. i mean let's get honest about this yeah. clothes do get in the way not all the time but you know there are easy things that we can remove yeah in order for us to be more Mm. easily vulnerable with each other, carving out time that's safe, Mm. a door wedge under your door if you've got children, maybe a big heavy dressing gown behind the door just in case. There are things Mm. that make us feel safe and things like that can help. Mm. A lock on your door, you know, (laughs) you'll feel safe. Should we take a break? Yes. So, endurance. Wait, no, first I'm Stephen. I'm Nathan. And we're brothers, actually. In case you hadn't noticed. Yeah. I mean, I know the much more uh, masculine physique on this side may have thrown you off. Yeah, I'm actually older. Yeah. Taller. Stronger. Fitter. Maybe. Oh, definitely. (laughs) Anyway, that's not the point of endurance. Uh, The point is spiritual training, not physical. Yep, yep. Not that we, obviously, we don't compete that much. Nor spiritually. You shouldn't compete spiritually either. No, no. But I'm better than you. <laughs> Don't know what to say to that. There is no no answer. So the point of endurance is all about one Timothy. Take a out of each other. All about one Timothy four verse eight, which says, "Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better." And so it was an idea, which I think it was my idea actually, wasn't it? It was a joint effort. There's no I in team. Yes, yeah, so it was definitely my idea. Yeah, and. Um, the idea being that we have to... Well, I was challenged because basically I enjoy exercise. I was doing lots of weight training, lots of running, and I was getting a bit... Um, you were failing to uh, train spiritually. Yeah. Yeah, you could say that I was idolizing physical fitness rather so than... So we created endurance to help him learn better how and to so balance I... spiritual and physical training. Yeah, basically. Okay. Because I already cracked it. No. No? No. <laughs> got a long way to go yeah so go check us out i can see the light at the end of the tunnel i mean you, you're way behind and we're back mm-hmm. we're back for tips and resources yes. miss me cold it's not, well, I don't miss me cold, but it sounded better when I said tips and resources <laughs> with the cold. So tips and resources. We're doing the same things every week, not because we're lazy, but these are really good resources. So in no particular order, we've got um, the message of the Song of Songs by Tom Gledhill. 
if you want to understand more about the language and the depth and the richness of the Song of Songs, mm-hmm. that's great. Um, Hot, Holy and Humorous by Jay Parker. Really good book. She goes through some real basics of um, of intercourse, basically. Mm. The physiology, biology, all that kind of stuff. Important. You know, if you're a, particularly a wife, which is who she writes for, and you're not quite sure how the whole thing works with your husband, then that's a really great book. It's just honest kind of coffee table time stuff, isn't it? Mm. Um, a couple, CJ Mahaney and... Carolyn Mahaney wrote Feminine Appeal. CJ Mahoney wrote Sex, Romance, and the Glory of God. They are a couple who um, have done some some marriage ministry, and they're really good books. Mm. They're very, very different, yeah. um, but really good resources to have um, on your on your bedside table, your nightstand, and, and get mm. some resources in. There's, yeah, there's all sorts of things you can do to um, you know help your marriage. And reading some books. I know people go on marriage courses and uh, stuff, but. You know, just sitting down and reading about it and and not rushing through it, but just taking it in. Those books are are really good, aren't they, for that? They're very good. So tips and resources, yep. Books, um, Song of Songs, of course. Read the Song of Songs together (laughs) or listen to it. You can listen listen, to it. That's a good idea. You can get the, you know, various apps and there's various places you can go and listen to it. Yeah. And what we've been talking about is the importance of prayer, Mm. obviously. So praying together, if there is an issue, if you are finding that you're not both wanting to make love, either both of you or one of you, then sort of talk it through, but pray it through and work out what what might be be able to be done about it because it's important and it's healthy and it's good. So, um, you know, we know that you can't always make love and there'll be times when you can't, but like you say, if there's something, a barrier that you can lift, then, then do it, yeah? And some of these things are really easy to get out of the way. Mm. You know, clean bedding can be a little thing. Um, I'm much happier going to bed with clean bed sheets. You know, if I haven't changed them for a little while, then that's a turn off to me, to be honest. So there's always going to be stuff that gets in the way. Um, Are we too tired? Are there physical issues going on? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if we had a really busy season, are we under financial strain? Mm -hmm. I mean, making love can be a great stress reliever, but it can be the best thing and it can be the last thing you want to do. So all we're saying is just have a think through your own marriage mm. are there simple barriers that you can remove mm. um, for example I did it, said this before the break but sticking a door wedge under your door might provide that level of safety and security that you feel more able to express your love to one another because the kids can't run in yeah. um, our children can come into our room but they also know that it's a door they don't ever enter they they knock first you know we've taught them respect for our space mm. as we have respect for theirs and that's something that isn't necessarily mm. going to happen with three-year-old mm. ours are a bit older uh but there are things you can do to, to create those safe spaces yeah. and we've always tried to set our bedroom up as a you know not an adult only zone because that's a bit daft the boys come through for showers and stuff in the ensuite but you know it's a, it's a room that they have respect for because it's where mm. we sleep and we have respect for their rooms and that respect helps, but when they were younger, a dressing gown behind the door or a door wedge <laughs> provides a lot of security yeah. at very low cost if you can't stick a door lock on. Yeah, taking away those barriers to be now to be relaxed and enjoy, yeah. enjoying each other's uh, company. Relax is important for husbands and wives. It doesn't matter which you are. Mm-hmm. Um, don't ever think that wives want sex less than men. That may be perhaps more normal, but it's not. No. it's not exclusively true either. There's plenty of wives who what we would call higher drives. So they want to have a greater frequency of sex than the husbands mm. and vice versa. So I think the other resource is don't get stuck into stereotypes and don't ever look mm. at Hollywood for what's supposed to happen. Because, no. <laughs> I mean, it's hilarious to watch from a funny point of view, but I don't think they're making it comedically. No. <laughs> Let's take a break. Yes. I was asked to record a video and write a book by a friend. He'd seen so many people with broken dreams, just hopeless about life they were living and the life before them. So I wrote a book, It's my very first book, it's called Broken Dreams and Hope. It's based on my own life, some struggles that I've had. And the fact that through those struggles, however bad they were, whether they were caused by me or caused against me, throughout all of that, there was still hope. Let me just read a few things that people who've read this book already have said. It's a page turner with each chapter leaving you wanting to read just one more. You gave the reader motivation to look up and grab the hand that can lift you up on your feet and walk you through life's muddy mire. And I love the way you spoke of hurt and abuse but never going into details. That would have robbed the reader of their own inward pains and ability to take hold of the Lord's extended hand, the hand that will never let go. Broken Dreams and Hope is a book I wrote because I know what it is to have broken dreams. I know what it is to feel hopeless but I also know what it is to have hope. 
because that hope has a name, and that name is Jesus Christ. And welcome back for The Takeaway. The takeaway, <laughs> the bit that makes me hungry. So, and um, this is where we get a little time to recap mm. what we've talked about. And um, I'm going to start by telling you that next week we've got part four. Yes. <laughs> because there's too much more to say that we haven't had time to say. And we're mm. speaking really faster than we should do. And there's so much more that we want to do Yeah. Um, and cover. So there'll be a part four. So, yes. Um, what have you learned or had relearned or what struck you that you're taking away today? I think the scripture that talk, encourages us to make love, to to say, don't give up making love, don't give up yes. having time together like that. And I think, oh, wow, in the scripture, it's encouraging us, all the bad stuff around, all the negative things about sex. And in the Bible, there it is. Keep doing it. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, you look around Hollywood, I always make the joke about this, but Hollywood will tell you that, you know, marriage is boring and marriage sex mm. is really boring and, you know, you're never going to have it and it's just not going to happen as for straight husbands. And it's all a load of rubbish. Mm. Actually, it's a construct that isn't necessarily true. It doesn't need to be true. And mm. after 25 years of being married to you, I can say our sex life has done nothing but improve, mm. which it would do because we get lots of practice. Yeah. Being blunt, but if you keep on doing something you get better at it mm. it's not complicated yeah we've covered moods and feelings yes and we were sort of talking about um the importance of not letting the moods and feelings stop us from having sex yeah. really isn't it uh, and so and we've given some tips about that about praying and stuff haven't mm. we um so what's your takeaway my takeaway i think it's the reminder that feelings can affect us in really really strong ways but actually god is kind of egging us on he's he's rooting for us to have mm. sex and and it's that reminder that, I don't know, it's just striking me, I suppose, for some reason, but mm. it's just there are plenty of things that can get in the way, but there are plenty of obstacles we can easily remove. Mm. Um, and I think sort of second part to that for me would be remembering that um, sex is important, mm. but actually vulnerability is a part of that. Uh, and sort of it's, it's helping me to remember those times when actually – we felt very safe as a couple. Um, and again, we're not talking about safe from physical violence. We're talking about safe because we can shut the door and the children can't run in. And mm. that that creates a, a feeling of safety and, and helps us to be more vulnerable. And mm. I think the other part is a reminder that when you're vulnerable to me, I'm reminded about how I need to be vulnerable to Jesus as mm. you are. Um, and that's quite a, that's quite a, passionate, a, a powerful thing, really. Mm. Yeah, in the beginning, God made... You know, man and woman, and and they yes. were naked, like <laughs> God made and, Adam and Eve, and didn't make clothes. Yeah, uh, and then now we 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 have that that can be an obstacle. Can it, it can be we an can obstacle. Remove that. <laughs> there are obstacles you can remove, and maybe clothes might be one of them. Yeah, yeah. we're not suggesting that you walk around the house naked. That may be inappropriate. <laughs> However, um, if you're in your own, why not? Yeah, makes life a lot easier. Yeah, so doing things to help each other. Um, to keep going, just like date nights and and stuff like that, you know. Keep yes. keep keep it going in the in, when you can and how you can and where it's right for you as a couple. I'm remembering seasons when we couldn't. Yeah. Um, two months um, last year when I had some issues with my heart when we were first married, we fell out with each other quite badly for about six months. Mm. You know, there's seasons where it goes wrong, either because of health issues, because of age, because you've got you're mm. living with the in-laws or they're with you, or you've got major stresses because you're trying to renovate a house and it's all collapsing around you. And mm. there's plenty of reasons that are going to get in the way. But I think our our general point today is simply this: remove the obstacles that are in the way that are easy to remove. Yeah, there's plenty of complicated ones that you can't, but get yeah. rid of the ones you can. Yeah, simple. Simple. <laughs> So there you go, Marriage Matters, part four next week. Um, let's get physical. Uh, have a look through those resources, and uh, we will see you again very, very soon for more Marriage Matters awesomeness, yeah. because matters of the marriage are important because marriage matters. <laughs> so we're going to discuss more matters of the marriage, because marriage, marriage matters. Yeah. So thanks for joining us. My name is Andy. And I'm Joe. And I'm still Andy. So have a good time, and we will see you very soon again for the last one of yeah. the season. Mm. Be our season finale. Yeah. Thanks for joining Bye for us. Now. Bye for now.
ways to keep in touch with the Berry Bunch. Visit our website and sign up to the Berry Bites newsletter so that you can be notified of all our videos, posts, exciting news and seasonal events. Subscribe to our Vimeo and YouTube channels where we post brand new homegrown video resources every week. Join us on Dingdash, a fabulous place that connects people from all around the world. It's social media as it should be. Come join the rebellion. Like us on Facebook where we hang out and post extra things to encourage and inspire you. We're on Twitter and Tumblr too. You can also follow us on Instagram, where we share extra photos from the world of the Berry Bunch. If you've enjoyed any of our posts or videos, share it with a friend and encourage them too. And if you want to encourage us, then like, comment and share on what we make. To help support the ministry we freely provide, Check us out on Patreon where you can support us financially as you feel led.